Sometimes it takes us longer to complete tasks at hand. Having Asperger's, not making sense. Our actions are different. Hello everyone and welcome to Autism Stories, where we connect you with amazing people that help teens and adults with autism become more independent and successful. I'm your host, Doug Bletcher, the founder of Autism Personal Coach. When I started this journey with uh, the Autism Stories podcast, I thought I could really use a theme song and was very fortunate to be introduced to Megan Metzelar. Megan previously wrote and perform the song, Who Am I?, and graciously allowed us to use it for this podcast. Each verse provides us with some important observations from someone with autism about their life, and today we will talk about that with Megan, along with how music has beneficial, been beneficial to her life. We hope you enjoy today's conversation. Megan, thank you very much for joining us today. So, your wonderful song, Who Am I?, has been the theme song for the Autism Stories podcast, and I can't thank you enough for that. Before we talk about that song, I wanted to learn where does your story begin in terms of playing music? Well, growing up, I had difficulty with communication in general. That was when my grandmother discovered that instead of talking, I would sing. So we would sing everything. In fact, as soon as I got in the car, when she picked me up, I just fell down to the way down to our destination. And then we sang all the way home. Mm-hmm. We listened to oldies, classical, Broadway music. She even took me to the symphony and the ballet. I frequently ended up falling asleep in her lap. In her lap. We even made a song. And qu- quite often, people get some really positive benefits from playing music. How has being a mu- musician uh, been helpful to you in your life? Well, music's been my friend as well as my saving grace growing up, and today it's still my friend and saving grace. Having difficulty with communicating, I communicate my thoughts and emotions through my music, like my copyrighted CD. So when I started going to music therapy, that's when I really started to blossom. I took guitar lessons, violin lessons, and voice lessons through this music therapy service. The music therapist actually helped me with my CD, and I like to give her shout out um, to Megan Brewer with Music Therapy Services, as well as Mimi Sinclair, who was my first music therapist. Now, I, I know you've said you enjoy something that I would be personally terrified of, that is uh, performing on stage. Do you, do you get nervous at all going on stage? And if so, how do you calm your nerves before going in front of people and performing? Um, I do get nervous going on stage, and that's a normal feeling. I will say that when I'm on stage performing, I feel normal. I don't, I feel like I don't have these disabilities and challenges. When I get on the stage, I take several deep breaths, and that seems to help me. Another thing that helps me fell down when I first get on stage is not even look at the audience. I just take a spot in the wall in the back of the auditorium and look at that point in the wall. Because for some reason, when I look at the audience, sometimes it makes me even more nervous. If I'm well prepared, I'm less nervous, too. Now, if someone listening wants to book you to perform, uh, how, how do they go about doing that? Oh, that is quite simple. All you have to do is email me at uh, megalina19 at gmail.com, and that is spelled M-E-G-A-L-E-N-A-1-9 at gmail.com. You don't just play music, but you write music as well. What inspired you to write the song, Who Am I? Well, when I was a teenager, I wrote an article and uploaded it to Teen Inc. It's my story about what it's like to be a female on the autism spectrum. The song, Who Am I, is based on that article. In, in Who Am I, you talk about being easily angered and easily confused. Can you talk about 
situations that these emotions are more most likely to occur? I was trying to get Doug. <laughs> um, as, <laughs> as a teenage girl, I didn't quite understand things. I was frequently excluded from friendship groups. Teenage girls are expected to look, act, and dress a certain way, and I didn't always fit that description. I sometimes didn't even understand the humor. I struggled with reading social cues, and honestly still struggle with that today. Some girls are just harsher in their judgment compared to boys. And have you found any any strategies that have helped you with those situations? Well, I have had, like, you know, uh, several therapists, like, help me learn methods of how to read social cues, but even with them helping me, I still struggle with reading it. Like, when someone is being sarcastic, I think they're being serious, and I can get very offended by what they say. Something else that uh, you touched on in Who Am I that I've heard many adults uh, discuss is the fear that you aren't improving even when all those around you say that you are. Are there things that have been helpful to you in letting you know, yes, I am getting better? Well, I just recently obtained my associate's degree in biological science, and I'm currently working towards my bachelor's with about 13 classes left. Um, I honestly never thought I would get to the point of obtaining my social or my associate's degree, and yet here I am working towards my bachelor's degree. My first two years of school were not beneficial, and when I finally found the right school for my needs, which was a combination of homeschooling and tutoring, I basically had to start all over again. It took a long road for me, and to get to this point in my life is a huge accomplishment for me. And what and what are you uh, attempting to get your bachelor's in? A biological science. Eventually, I like to work in some kind of a lab. I, I know for many adults with, with autism that it's tough to communicate about their emotions. I think music can be a great way to communicate about these things. One emotion that it's really hard to discuss for anyone is grief. You wrote a, a song that is called Saying Goodbye. Was this song therapeutic not just for you, but for your other family members as well? Well, I wrote this song to express my grief and sadness about the passing of my late paternal grandfather. And instead of going into a state of depression, I wrote the song specifically for my grandfather since I had a close relationship with him. And it was very hard on me to uh, lose him, and writing the song was therapeutic for me. And, and do you just overall find music to be an easier way to express your emotions? Usually, yes. Another emotion that can be hard to discuss um, sometimes is gratitude. You wrote about this in the song, What You Mean to Me. Why was it important for you to write this song? Well, I wrote this song for my mother on her birthday a couple years ago. She had no idea that I was writing it for her, and I wanted to be able to tell her how much she meant to me. So I recorded a YouTube video of myself playing the song for her, and I played it for her on her birthday. And she loved it so much that she started to cry. Now, so where where do you see like from here on out, like with your musical career? Where do you, what, what would you like to be doing musically? Well, obviously, I um, would like to be able to write some more songs, maybe get another um, album copyrighted. Um, I'm trying to. I've been taking part in some. I want to say musical theater productions, but like the singing and dancing group. I'm actually involved in one right now with Guardian Angels Church and Natty. So we're actually about to open next week. So. Well, that's exciting. And how can uh, people get tickets for that show? Um, they can go on to their uh, website, or they can just Google search for any technology. And that should take them to a link um, where they could get tickets. The tickets are um, $15. And we open on Friday, the 26th of April. We have the show on the 26th, the 27th, and the 28th. The, um, the Friday and Friday shows are at 8 o'clock. The Sunday one is at 3 p.m. And then we also have a show on May 3rd and May 4th, which is a Friday and Saturday. And those shows are also at 8 p.m. And last year, I knew you, I knew you were trying to get your uh, musical album copyrighted. Uh, where are you in that process? Uh, well, I officially am copyrighted. 
point. And it, it took several months, but I got an email, I think it was like a couple months ago, from my music therapist, uh, Megan Brewer, who basically forwarded me the email that said my music was copyrighted. So That's, that's great. And I, I know um, several other musicians um, that, you know, that are, that are clients of Autism Personal Coach. What was the copyright process like if they wanted to go I mean, about that? I mean, it was a bit challenging. Like, I had my music therapist, like, you know, help me fill out the forms and uploading the uh, music files. Because, like, without, without her help, I would probably still be sitting here trying to figure out how to fill out the form and get the files uploaded. So mm. my music therapist really helped me with the whole process of uploading it to the copyright site and all of that. Well, that's great. Well, Megan, I really appreciate the conversation. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to today's episode, and thank you to Megan so much for the conversation. I have a strong bias towards not only music as a way to help people with autism, but so many of the creative arts. My wife's an art therapist, and through her, I have certainly learned the value of how art can be a wonderful means of bringing forth unconscious stressors to those with autism and create better understanding. Being involved in the theater can help to learn how to better communicate with others and an opportunity to develop community. Dance can be very therapeutic for those that have a sensory need for movement, and studies really have shown that it can give an improved sense of body awareness. I can't tell you how many talented writers with autism that I've met, and this can be a fantastic way to write about yourself, others, and experiences as a way to deal with the anxiety of everyday lives. Ultimately, if you can find something you like to do and you think you're pretty good at it, you are going to feel so much better about yourself, and the creative arts are a great way to do that. Did you know that Autism Personal Coach saves people with autism from feeling alone and being isolated? So often, teens and adults with autism struggle with anxiety and as a result, don't have success in their lives. Autism Personal Coach is a unique service in that we help those with autism by working on meaningful, individualized goals in the setting in which they'll be used so their anxiety is greatly reduced and as a result, they can become much more independent and successful. To get an autism coach for a loved one or yourself, it's very easy. All you have to do is email autismpersonalcoach at yahoo.com or call 216-336-5889 and request a coach today. On next week's episode, we are going to talk with Tim Goldstein, the author of A Geek's Guide to Interviews, 15 Critical Items for the Technical Type. Talk to you then.